Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Yeah, you look like the third person tonight. Really? <laughs> yeah, there was a girl I picked up. She was probably four rides ahead of you. She lives over in Southie. She said in college she watched the movie Goodwill Hunting, and that's why she wanted to move here. Yeah, I kid you not when I say I 100% would have missed my flight. My hotel wasn't offering shuttles at the time, so I literally had to resort to Uber and Lyft. There were no Ubers at 3.30 and only one Lyft car, and that guy was it. If you do need a ride at 3 or 4 in the morning, I highly recommend booking it the day before. That's how it worked out for me, while others at my hotel were still waiting. But anyways, Welcome to Logan Airport, where today I'll be flying aboard Delta's A220-100, the former CS-100, over to Detroit, Michigan in economy class. My first time on the aircraft type, so super excited to see what it's all about and to show you guys around this brand new plane. After an easy check-in process here at Terminal A, I proceeded through a very empty security checkpoint to where I am now looking at where my gate is on these departure boards. So I'm coming over here to get a better view of my A220, um, but it is literally completely empty. Like there's plenty, there's one person sleeping. <laughs> the satellite terminal is accessed from an underground tunnel and is used almost exclusively by Delta. In fact, all of Terminal A is used solely by Delta and their partner WestJet. I didn't have a ton of time to wander around the airport though, as I came in pretty late. So time to make my way back to the gate. My A220 I'll be riding on very shortly today is N109. DU, at the time a two-year-old aircraft delivered to Delta in March of 2019. It's one of 42 A220 100s in Delta's fleet. While you're boarding, please do try to maintain six feet of social distancing between you and the next party. Thank you. Throughout the pandemic, Delta was one of the leaders in safety precautions, and their back-to-front boarding was testament to that. It lasted all the way till September of 2021, and as this was filmed in March, I got to be one of the first on board. Feast your eyes on one of the best domestic interiors you can find in the US, especially on a plane of this size. There are 109 seats in total on Delta's A220-100, 12 of those being first class up front, arranged 2-2 across, followed by 15 Comfort Plus seats and 82 Economy seats. The latter two classes both configured across the cabin in a very comfy 3-2 layout. As these truly are the replacement to the MD-88s and MD-90s, this cabin layout is very fitting. I'll be sitting this early morning in 24A near the back. Immediately when stepping on board, you can feel how sleek the interior is with wider economy seats, larger overhead bins for such a small jet, modern yet old school overhead controls, and absolutely sick mood lighting that eventually when turned on made this already amazing cabin even better. Sanitizing wipes were provided to all passengers upon boarding this A220, very typical of Delta these days. And as for the seats themselves now, 
While they aren't incredibly comfortable, they do have adjustable headrests and plenty of padding to make them really solid regional jet seats. The blue shade Delta chose for these seats is also the most commonly found in their entire fleet. Armrests are on the average side with a recline button fixed into it, which moves the seat back a few inches, like so. Legroom is another big pro of this plane, with a taller person like myself who stands at six foot, very comfortable in this economy seat. The safety card is found below in the seat back pocket, which itself is also quite generous in its storage capacity. Another huge positive of the A220 is the above average size PTB, found up above with a USB port just underneath. A universal power outlet is also available per seat, which is amazing. Lastly, windows are noticeably large as well, and 24A has perfect alignment to have two window angles on this flight. And just like that, we're off to the Motor City. I did grab some quick breakfast from Duncan back by my gate, so since we're now in the air, time to satisfy my hunger. The tray table on these A220s is pretty standard sized for airplanes, with it being extendable and having a single cup groove. Before I could start eating though, the flight attendants rolled the cart through the cabin and offered everyone a snack bag, with the contents of it being this welcome card, a chocolate chip cliff bar, which was very good by the way, a small squirt of hand sanitizer, and a tiny water bottle. At the time, Delta was still not offering their usual variety of drinks, but they have since returned after quite the wait. The route this morning aboard the A220, which is already well underway, will take us 1 hour and 59 minutes cruising up at only 22,000 feet as the higher altitudes were quite bumpy when attempting to cruise there earlier. After an initial eastward takeoff, we turned around to the west, flew over a sliver of Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Vermont, now gliding over upstate New York where we'll pass by Rochester and Buffalo before going over Lake Erie, Ontario, Canada and finally Detroit, Michigan. While the captain tried his best up front to find some smooth air, today was largely not a good day to fly in the eastern US. So please excuse some shakes as I try to keep this camera steady for a look at these PTVs. The Delta A220 is equipped with their most updated IFE system, so these touchscreens are incredibly responsive and offer an abundance of passenger features. Starting with an interactive flight map, or rather maps, you can easily track your progress by clicking their various map options and even some additional info. Speaking of additional info, there's also some facts about the A220-100 itself, in case you're wondering. 
As for the rest, well, I kinda about had it with the bumps, so if this flight does go through a smooth patch later on, I'll come back to the IFE. Don't deny it, you know you always wanted a window in the lav. Besides that awesomeness, the rest of the A220 lavatory is also quite nice. It's fairly spacious, has nice blue lighting to give the bathroom some added flavor, and the decor is very professional-like with a sink that isn't tiny and an actual counter to put personal items on if so desired. Definitely a very classy lav if there is such a thing. As we passed by Buffalo, we finally got a few minutes of smooth air, so back to the IFE. Everything on these screens can be accessed from the side menu, which includes tons of movies from a whole array of genres, same can be said for TV series. Then there are 12 live TV channels available, which worked spot on when testing it. Music and audio stations, food drink menus, hub airport diagrams, games, and finally, a whole kids channel. Plenty to do on this system, and thankfully I got through it as the bumps are clearly back. Besides the monitors in front of you, Delta also has their Wi-Fi network, which can be clicked on in settings. The Wi-Fi itself does cost money, but if connected to it, you can also watch their entertainment stockpile on any mobile device as well. Something airlines seem to continue implementing on their planes is free messaging on iMessage and WhatsApp, Delta jumping on the bandwagon as well. So nope, don't have to fork over any more money to text a friend or loved one while in the air. It is a little spotty in areas, so do watch out for that, but overall, it does work okay. Here are your seatbelts. Just starting our descent uh, on the arrival into uh, Detroit. You're on the ground about 30 minutes ago in the traffic flow this morning. Last weather's uh, still unchanged, overcast, a little light rain, uh, temperature about 50 degrees. We want to thank you for choosing Delta Airlines, and we hope to see you on a future flight. Flight attendants, please prepare to camp for a while. This very enjoyable flight aboard the Delta A220-100 came to an end way quicker than I would have liked. But alas, we are now on our descent into DTW over Southern Ontario. As we are coming in from the Northeast into Metro Airport, normally downtown would be visible on my side of the plane, but on a day like today, tough luck. Instead, here's some Motown music to lead us into runway 21 left. If you guys watch my videos often, you'll know I am very straightforward and honest as can be with y'all. I fly a lot of airlines and a lot of aircraft, so I go right to the point whether it's good or bad. The Delta A220-100 is, honestly, a smaller version of their A350s and they may even be better. I absolutely love the 3-2 layout on these jets. The amazing spacious cabin feel with that sweet mood lighting, large responsive PTVs, a loaded IFE system, wider seats equipped with USB and power ports, and by far, 
the lavatory with a window. The plane is just so noticeably innovative and new, and I love it. Even though I had nobody next to me, it probably wouldn't have even made a difference, even if the flight was longer. Delta is continuing to expand their A220 fleet as time goes on, most recently introducing the larger A220-300, so there's definitely a better chance to catch a ride on one of these birds nowadays. They do seem to be most commonly found on Salt Lake City routes, but they're certainly not limited to those. If you do have the chance to, would highly recommend picking this plane, and if you have ridden the A220, do let me know what you think about it below, and if you agree with my thoughts. For those of you that don't know, this airport is one of my favorites in the US, so I definitely like flying through or to Detroit when I can. I got one more flight this morning and a quick connection here at DTW, so we'll need to start finding my next gate. I hope you guys enjoyed my first A220 flight today aboard Delta Airlines. I got a hunch there'll be just a few more opportunities to fly these aircraft over the next 30 plus years. Thank you guys for watching and catch you on the next one.